He is a leader of the civil rights movement for many decades, so please welcome the Honorable Bernie Sanders. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all for inviting me to be with you uh, this morning at the Islamic Center. And let me introduce to you my wife, Jane. And my, my daughter, Karina, is here somewhere. There she is. Let me do something. Um, that I have been criticized for not doing as a politician and being a little bit personal. I don't like talking about myself very much. I much prefer talking about ideas and vision, but let me, given the moment that we're in and the tragedy that took place in New Zealand, let me just say a, a few words about myself. There are, there were two forces, I think, that shaped my political views. One, that I grew up in a family that did not have a lot of money and the pressure of not having money on my family is, I think, the same pressure that exists for millions of families throughout this country and people in this room right now. It's moms and dads worrying about how they're going to be able to provide for their kids, uh, arguments about do you spend money on this and do you spend money on that, and kind of causing tension uh, in the house. And also, as a young person, seeing that there were other families that had a, a whole lot. One of the dreams that my mother had as we grew up in a three and a half room rent controlled apartment in, in Brooklyn, what she wanted is, I think so many people in America, that she wanted a home of her own, not to live in an apartment. And uh, she died young from a heart ailment and she never achieved uh, her dream. Uh, so we never, she never had that home of her own. So. Growing up in a family that struggled economically certainly shaped uh, my views uh, about uh, politics and where we might want to be going as a country. But the second part of my life that shaped my views uh, was being Jewish, is being Jewish. And uh, crying when I would read books about the Holocaust, these picture books of what happened at Auschwitz and the other concentration camps and tears which streamed down my eyes. And it never occurred to me, it never, I never could understand why would people do such terrible and horrible things to people. And then you get a little bit older and you study history. You study our own country and what happened to the Native American people, terrible things that happened to them. We study about the abomination of slavery and the segregation and the racism that our African-American brothers and sisters experienced. We study about the fact of uh, the prejudice against the Irish and the Italians in this country, against the Asians, so many Asians pe Asian people here in the West Coast. And many of you should be familiar with the so-called Asian Expulsion Act the terrible prejudice uh, against uh, our Asian brothers and sisters. And after all of that suffering, after all of a horrible 20th century, which has seen a number of genocides, one might have hoped and believed that maybe, just maybe, the world would understand that we share a common humanity. That who... that who really stays up nights worrying that the color of your skin is darker than mine? Who worries that your religion is different than mine? Every person in this room, and I've got four kids and seven beautiful grandchildren, every person in this room wants their children to have good health. Every parent worries about what happens if your child becomes sick. Every person in this room wants our kids to have a quality education, to grow up, to be as wonderful and as smart as they can 
be. Every person in this room wants our kids to be able to drink clean water and to breathe clean air and not to see this planet destroyed by climate change. Every person in this world holds that belief, that hope for their children. I was thinking so hard about what I could say about the tragedy of New Zealand and I, I wish I could tell you something profound and I, I just can't. The only thing that I perhaps can say is out of that terrible tragedy where people were slaughtered because of their religion is that hopefully in our country and around this world, and let me just say this, in my view, what America, what the promise of America for my father who came here with nothing in his pocket at the age of 17, what the promise and the belief of this country and where people all over the world have looked to this country is the belief that we are a nation which believes in diversity. We are a nation that welcomes that salad that the pastor talks so beautifully about. <laughs> that we learn from each other. No matter what our religion, what the color of our skin, what country we came from. In fact, what a wonderful advantage to learn so much that we can learn from each other. Your background is different than mine. What a joy it is to share that. So in this difficult moment, not only in American history where we see a rise in hate crimes, and not only in a world where we see a growing tendency toward authoritarianism, where demagogues are picking on minority communities all over this world, now is the time, as everybody who has come here before you has told you, now is the time, as never before, for us to stand up to hatred of all kind. And to show the world that this nation, in fact, will be a leader in bringing our people together regardless of their religion and to create an economy that works for all of us, an environment that works for all of us, and a world in which love will conquer hate. Thank you very much.